What is up guys, Noah Banks here, and the topic of the day is alcohol. And the reason why I want to go over this topic, this is something that a ton of people ask me up here in New York because there's so many happy hours, birthdays, celebrations of new jobs, graduations, all this type of stuff. And everybody, the first thing people want to celebrate with are um, drinks. You know, whether it's champagne, whether it's liquor, whether it's wine, you know, watching like Scandal or something. My, my girlfriend does it. That's, that's why I say that. But so I want to do some research and give you guys um, a few things, just give you an intro to alcohol, which you probably already know give you some pros and cons, and then I'm gonna give you my recommendations, and that's about it. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, guys, so an intro. So alcohol, I kinda separate it into three barriers. You got your beer, you got your wine, and you got your straight liquor itself. And if you wanna think about it in this type of way, if you wanna see from an alcohol content perspective, um, beer has about 5%. Wine has 8 to 14 percent, and then liquor can go anywhere between 35 and 45. Keep in mind, different types of alcohols have a little bit more higher alcohol concentration. And for you guys who don't know, like, so you you might see something that says 80 proof liquor. What that means is basically it's twice the amount of alcohol content that's in the actual bottle itself. So if you see an 80 proof, um, any type of drink, it basically has 40 percent of alcohol. Now, a lot of people want to go ahead and say, you know, you want to drink moderately, you want to be a moderate drinker. Well, what does a moderate drink size look like, right? So, I did a little bit of research into it, and a moderate drink, if you want to look from a beer perspective, is 12 ounces of beer. 12 ounces of beer has around 153 calories, and then if you want to have a light beer, it's around 103 calories. And then for the wine, it's basically five ounces. So one serving of wine equals five ounces. So five ounces of a red wine is around 125 calories. And then for white wine, it's around 121 calories. So there's not really a difference actually between the two. Um, and then for liquor, it's around 1.5 ounces, which is around the size of a shot. Um, so that consists of vodka, gin, whiskey. That's gonna run you for around, around 100 calories. And the biggest thing about alcohol, a lot of people are like, oh man, like what's the benefit? So it actually, technically, it does provide energy. So, you know, your carbs provide four calories per gram, your protein, four calories per gram, your fat, nine calories per gram. Alcohol actually does seven. Um, so technically it is a, you could say it is a food, but the thing is, it's not a nutrient. It does zero, like, it does nothing for your body. And that leads me to talk about the effects of alcohol on your body. So it does have positive and negative effects. The biggest thing to realize actually is that alcohol, um, actually is prioritized over your carbs, the proteins, and the fats in your body for when it comes to breaking down. So your body's gotta be like, try to get all the alcohol out of your system first, and then it's gotta worry about everything else. So you gotta keep that in mind if you're trying to lose weight or really optimize the food that you're eating um, and the energy that you're expending. If you're drinking alcohol, the alcohol's gotta be broken down first and then the rest of your macronutrients. So that's number one. Two, the liver is your the main organ that breaks down alcohol. And it can only do so much in the, a given amount of time. So how I kind of like to explain it is you think about it that your blood alcohol content level, so your BAC, is at its peak at like about 35 to 45 minutes after you've had only one drink. Your liver can only take so much alcohol after after it's had enough, it's over capacity, it's all the alcohol is gonna go right into the different body, body fluids. So think about like your sweat, the your urine, your lungs, and that's why you usually get that breathalyzer test uh, if the police comes and catches you driving or anything like that. So don't don't do that. PSA, don't do that. Um, and that's how they can tell from your breath. Another fact that I learned actually is for um, the women out there actually. So women, and this is actually something I found out, due to the fact that usually women tend to be a little bit smaller and they also have 40% less of the enzyme, the stomach enzyme that breaks down alcohol in the body. So it actually, their body absorbs alcohol a lot faster. So just be cautious ladies when you're out there. That's why they usually say for a moderate serving that guys can have two drinks and girls can have one. It's just because of the fact that your body naturally, biologically, um, absorbs alcohol a lot faster. Another effect that alcohol has on your body is of course hangovers. We all had those times where you wake up the next morning, you had a little bit too much fun the night before, and you wake up the next morning, your head's hurting, you're feeling gross, you might throw up again, and those are all effects of alcohol. So alcohol, one, makes you dehydrated, which makes, that's why you're really thirsty, it makes you dehydrated and very lightheaded, um, stops any type of glucose production, and that glucose, of course, is your energy. If you don't remember that, go watch the carbs video. So yeah, so you have low glucose levels, so you already have low energy, it irritates your stomach, which is why you throw up. Um, so those are a 
couple negative effects that you have to keep in mind, and I mean, we all notice this, um, but a big solution to this, and it's not like, I'm not saying this is the 100% solution, but one of the main reasons why people have always stated the don't drink on an empty stomach is because food actually slows down that process of alcohol getting in um, into your bloodstream. So when you eat, especially if you eat a little bit more fattier foods, it lets your stomach digest more of the alcohol and really get it out of your system so it doesn't go into your blood and that's what really makes you um, have that hangover, hangover afterward. So always make sure you don't drink on it. That's actually a true, that's not a myth. That's actually a real thing. Make sure that you eat before you drink. Now there are a supposedly positive effects to it. Um, one is that you have a lower chance of getting any type of cardiovascular disease, um, lower risk of diabetes, your high blood pressure, improves your good cholesterol, which is your HDL, and it helps sometimes reduce blood clotting. Um, and then I'm gonna finish it up on my recommendation. So my recommendation one is to think about the goal that you have in mind, whether that's for your body, with your health, like what's your main goal? So my main goal, to be honest, is to gain a little bit more weight and gain a little bit more muscle. In order to do that, I need to eat a lot of food and my body needs to metabolize that correctly. If I drink alcohol, a lot of it, it kind of hinders that process because of course, my body's gotta try to take care of the alcohol first, then, then it's gotta take care of everything else, like the protein, which is gonna be huge for me. That also leads to number two, if you do decide to have some, drink moderately, right? That means having you know, maybe one drink every day or so. I would say like maybe four or five times, you know, four or five times max during the week. Um, and that doesn't mean binging a lot. It means just taking a moderate drink, enjoying it, having fun. Um, and then three, my biggest recommendation is if you are gonna drink, don't, this is actually something I started doing and it helped so much, even with like hangovers actually, um, is don't try to get high calorie mixers. So, you know, these big sodas, these juices, all these like, great concoctions that you think these margaritas they're actually adding the more more stuff you put in your drink that's more calories and that's the more unhealthier that your drink gets so i personally i know this doesn't sound so like tasty but i drink most of my drinks straight and it makes me one it makes me drink less because of the fact that it's so strong and i can sip on it throughout the night um so i usually do that or you can get it like a sugar-free mixer my roommate usually does like cranberry like sugar-free like cranberry juice i think and it's still like you know, he still gets the nice effect of mixing with something else. Now, I want you to make the choice for yourself. Um, I can't tell you, oh, this is good, this is bad, you don't do this or do this. That is up to you, that is your choice based off of what you think is best for you and what's best for your body. So I just want you, I just wanted to go ahead and relay the information that I did, all the research, the facts that I did, feel free to look up um, any information yourself. If you find something, let me know. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at noahbanks at embracethehype.net and I'll be happy to answer and get back to you. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And you already know, embrace the hype.